recent lockdown imposed by the government um, across the five counties of Kenya um, has had a massive impact. Massive. Um, I can't overstress the impact. We were fully booked over the Easter period. We had uh, good bookings from Easter onwards. We were seeing a recovery in tourism as a whole, both international and local tourism. All of that has gone um, almost overnight. We, you know, in a lot of cases, people had paid deposits, which we're now having to refund. We don't have the money to refund it because we're still trying to keep our, our, our um, existing operations up and running. So um, that, that lockdown has had a massive, massive impact and will continue to have an impact on anybody involved in this region and any other region outside of the lockdown. Um, uh, you know, anybody involved out in, in, in tourism um, outside of that region uh, is going to be um, is going to be impacted in a in a similar way because that region is the prime is the main source of tourism local tourism particularly business and of course anybody coming into the country has to transit through that region before they can come to places like this so it's like turning off a tap um, completely um, that is that 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 um, that revenue source has gone overnight and to survive that is going to be difficult. Mm. So in, in order to kind of offset the losses in, in tourism, but there's a limit to how much we can do that, um, we, we, we've obviously had to cut costs, we've obviously had to reschedule bank debt, we've had to um, give people staff cuts, we've had to downsize our workforce, but we've also tried to make money in places where previously perhaps we were not um, not exploiting fully. Um, we run an integrated land use system on Old Pegeta. That means that we have um, a big ranching and agricultural operation. So we've tried to do as much as possible to squeeze those two operations for money. Uh, and we've also looked at fundraising. And thankfully, there have been people from around the world who've helped us uh, survive this period and to uh, to fill the shortfall in revenues that we're experiencing. Um, we have looked at technology. Um, we run, for example, um, a program called the Virtual Classroom, uh, where people in real time from anywhere um, in the world can join us for an hour every evening to meet the last two northern white rhinos on the planet uh, to be um, to, to meet them in real time, um, albeit virtually, um, to meet the keepers, um, to see the animals being fed and checked over from a health perspective, and to um, to receive a talk on the um, the biodiversity crisis that is facing the planet. Um, and we're hoping over time to be able to monetize uh, that that opportunity. But you know. It, these things, the, the development of technology to raise money or to develop revenue streams in ways that had previously not been envisaged is not something that we are able to simply turn on just because tourism has disappeared. All conservancies and tourism operators and camp operators in Kenya are fundamentally reliant upon the tourism industry. Um, and of course we can transition over time to different ways of making money but that will take time. Right now, what we're facing is a crisis of just unprecedented proportions. Um, and I, I really feel that the survival of the industry is currently at stake. We've survived a year. Um, we can probably just about survive another two or three months. Beyond that, I believe you'll start to see a collapse in this industry, which will take many years to recover to the detriment of Kenya's national interest. So it's just an emergency. So the financial impact um, from the lockdown, from the uh, latest wave, the latest COVID um, outbreak in Kenya, and the travel restrictions which have been renewed from countries such as the UK and the US, is 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 having is having a very very bad financial impact on our tourism business, on our ability to run the conservancy, and frankly on our ability to survive financially.
there is a, the, you know, we, we have survived a year of almost no tourism, saved by the local market. Well, as we were beginning to see a recovery, all of that was taken away from us. And we're back to where we were a year ago. And um, I think I'm speaking for the industry, but if this situation is to continue for very much longer, um, uh, and I mean a few months, then I think we would begin to see a real disintegration of the tourism industry in Kenya. And I cannot see how it is possible for people who are reliant on that industry to continue to survive. Um, so it's, it's a massive, massive problem. The, the financial loss to us from an income perspective over the past 12 months has been something in the region of five, well, okay, for old Pegeter has been something in the region of five million dollars, uh, just, just short of five million dollars. That's money that otherwise we would have expected to earn uh, from our tourism business. Um, if you add in the losses incurred by our tourism partners, I'm here talking about Serena Hotels, Old Pegeter Bush Camp, all of the various camps that are run and owned by third parties on the Old Pegeter Conservancy, I'm sure that you would be able to double that figure. So I would say the loss to Old Pegeter as a whole is something in the region of 10 million dollars over the last 12 months.